Okay, I'd like to call the order of the Public Works and Safety Committee at 7.10 p.m. on July 28th, roll call. Alderperson Hamill is not present. Alderperson Capusta. Here. And Alderperson Terrence. Here. We have a quorum of the committee present. Statement of public notice. This meeting was noticed in accordance with the open meeting law. Okay. We're here to discuss new business. A resolution adopted by the Common Council to send the Engel Kings Port Court proposal back to this committee for recommendations. So we have Alderman Terrence, who we did are interested in making a motion to reconsider. Okay. You'll have to do it since you were at the meeting. Got it. Okay. Um, I make a motion to reconsider. Uh, second. <laughs> so. And we open it up for discussion. I believe there's a gentleman. Yep, yep, go ahead. We would love to hear from him. All right. Thank you. Hello, my name's David Cornelli. I'm with Giles Engineering. Um, well, Giles has been doing geotechnical soil engineering uh, for 44 years in Waukesha County. I've been with him for 30 years. So just to give you a little background. But we did, we did a couple test borings and a, and a groundwater observation well at the Engel Kings property to evaluate the conditions, come up with design recommendations for their proposed addition. And I think you have the copy of that report, or if not, I can um, provide you a summary of it right now. But <clears throat> we, so we drilled two soil borings down to 30 feet, installed a groundwater observation well, measured the water within that well. The well was installed relatively deep, um, in some lower layers that had sand lenses in them. And we found the water, groundwater level to be approximately coincident with the lake level, the ordinary high water level of the lake. However, the soils above that depth, to a depth about six feet below the proposed residence, are consist of a lean clay soil. Um, it's very impermeable material. So to call it even a water table in some context, you know, wouldn't be, but we just use normal language so there's no confusion there. It is a depth of saturation that the soils are saturated and groundwater is present. However, because it's so impermeable, if you dig excavation, I think when we dig his excavation, if we, you know, if we go forward with it, we won't see water coming in because it's so impermeable. It's a relatively uniform clay. Uh, maybe I should just back up and say, I, I, we, as a company, Giles, and personally as an engineer, agree with the city's position two feet above the water table. That's what our standard recommendation is for residences, that you want to be two feet above the water table. We never want to have a client give a recommendation to a client that results in continuous pumping, continuous operation of their sump pumps. That's just an unpleasant situation for them for a long time. That's something we always want to avoid. So we never recommend that. Unless there's a unique situation, like we have in this case, um, where we have this uniform clay and we think groundwater flow will not be excessive. We did recommend in the report two multiple sumps, two sump pumps for the residents just as a contingency as a, because of the depth of the basement, it's a relatively deeper basement. I'll just but, pause you for a second, but these are the two gentlemen that will be making your decisions. Yeah. So okay, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Um, so, yeah, so, and then just to back up to, um, I, I think it's a good idea to have these, the, the ordinance, you know, the ordinance that you stay two feet above the water table, unless you do an engineered approach. When you engineer and look at things and, and design it right, I think the problem houses that you have in different communities are ones where no one did any engineering up front. That's generally the problem. It's not where they, they did some engineering and thought about it, evaluated it, and built it, and then they had a problem. Well, occasionally it can happen, but vast majority of them are where no one took a look at it and seen, see what the conditions are. So I think uh, there, again, there would be very little risk of, small amount of risk that there would be an issue with this. In order to mitigate that small risk, we're recommending that we observe completely and fully the excavation at the time of construction. If there's any problem or any indication, some sand lenses, silt lenses, more permeable soils, waters entering the excavation, then we're gonna recommend, hey, bring it up two foot above the water table. We've already discussed that with Mr. Engel King and, and the architect, and that would be their plan to resituate it. So the, the reason for, for wanting to do this is to achieve the architect and Mr. Engel King's desire for a, 
a higher basement floor, a higher lower level. So she's not here. She could describe that more fully, her design and all that. Um, I think I think that's a good overview of everything. Um, it, again, we, we did recommend in our report that they not go more than um, four feet below the, the ground, the level of saturation, the groundwater level. They're only two feet below that now. So they're a bit shallower than actually we recommended. The depth that we recommended was based on, we wanted to have a minimum separation where we did find more permeable soils at a greater depth. If you were to extend into that, then you would have a problem. I guess one other thing to address is the neighboring properties. That would be a concern. If you put a home in some permeable soil below the water table and your pumps are pumping, although the drawdown from a residential sump pump even pumping continuously is not likely to depress significantly groundwater levels that would increase stress on neighboring properties. So it would be unlikely, but you would have a potential for that in that situation. But if you put it in the clay and you don't have any appreciable flow, you're not gonna have any effect on the neighboring property. Um, a lot of times you'd be surprised too how many homes are in clay below levels of saturation and there's not, not problems, just because it's not permeable. Some pumps are not running. Usually in these areas, when we get into problems where we get mixed soils, maybe they think it's clay or it's silty, and you get into these mixed soils where you can have appreciable flow, that's where you get into problems. And it can be constructed in the summertime where it's above the water table, but then the spring comes, and that water table's up high, you have shallow rock or some kind of um, uh, confining layer that doesn't allow groundwater to, you know, to water to move when the spring it loads up on the impermeable material below and it's a permeable soil, that's where you have groundwater problems. But that's not what we're seeing here. We're seeing very uniform, clean clay with very little sand and gravel, nothing, just real clean, lean clay, like modeling clay. That's, you can imagine the permeability of that's very low. Um, and also another approach you can take for structures that we've we've recommended and have been built is you could line the whole basement below grade so it's a waterproof construction. Then you have no water flow, you have no dewatering. Um, that's not gonna affect the neighboring properties. That could be a problem as long as it's done right. That was the suggestion that the architect I talked to said. He also said that's really expensive. And it's really expensive <laughs> and it has some inherent risk to the to the owner that everything needs to be done right. Just like anything you build, if it's not done right, it's not gonna work right. But that is a, is a difficult build, so it is very expensive. And I think because the clay, and we would have suggested that if we had a, someone really wanted something deep below the water table and we had some mixed soils where we were thinking dewatering was gonna be a problem, then we'd recommend that water tight construction. But in that situation, you would have to do some construction dewatering to build it. For this situation, because the clay is so impermeable, just having a conventional system to pick up basically stormwater from rain events that might get into the ground and go into here is a better approach than going with a watertight construction because we don't ex expect any appreciable flow from groundwater into the, into the lower level drainage system. That's the reason why we think that approach is better than watertight for this. Help me understand this um, excavation process. So you'd be on site, and if you discover that there's problems, what does that mean then? What, then, does, what does the owner do, and what is he going back to then? We'd say we have a problem, and we'd contact him, the architect, and the general contractor, and say okay. we're seeing a lot of water coming in here. Unfortunately, we didn't expect it from the test borings, but we're seeing a lot of water come in, so we'd recommend you'd raise this up to elevation 795 two feet above the, the water level, two feet above the lake. And then what kind of impact would that have on his design? He would have a much shallower, lower level. Okay. I'm guessing an alternate is just a conventional basement, right? Is that sort of the plan B is how that works? Yeah. And this is generally a conventional basement, but it's just extended. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't right. be a basement. Conventional height basement. Yes, yeah. where you couldn't shoot a basketball into a hoop because it would hit the ceiling. Right. Yeah. And once again, we, we would never recommend something like this if they thought there was even some risk that it's a problem because you know, we're looking out for him, his interests, 
and and you know we want to have a long-term product that's not a problem. The floor recognizes the mayor. <laughs> um, just a statement. Um, sure. I, prior to becoming mayor, I served on the uh, board of uh, zoning board of appeals. Um, so something doesn't meet our code from a planning standpoint, you got to come in front of the uh, zoning board of appeals and uh, seek a variance. It's very similar to what's going on here, um, but there's guidelines on variances that you can't approve them now that you don't have the same restrictions that they have, but I'm just saying you can't approve variances based on self-imposed hardships and there's, this would be considered a self-imposed hardship. If he was talking that he wanted a basement, you could maybe claim that that's a hardship. Wanting a sports court, court is not necessarily a hardship. Um, so take that into consideration. Um, I, I mean, I, I wish I had a house with a sports court. I mean, they're, they're really cool. We talked about the, I talked about these. My, my father-in-law was an excavator. Um, and it was his business for years. And we talked about this. I remember when I was in college, I, boy, this would be kind of cool to do that. And he's like, well, we always run in the groundwater when we go like that. But, um, you know, it's, I, I understand what he wants to do, um, but I, I think there's other ways around it to still achieve it. But that's just my opinion. I, my biggest fear is it's not what's going on in that property. It's the potential of something else. You know, I, I feel better about it based on what the, you know, his engineer is saying, but it's also, you know, there's a lot of questions. There's a reason we have code. That's also something that we do consider as the effect on the neighboring properties. Um, if we thought there was going to be a problem with the excavation or construction, post post construction, we, we would, you know, advise, of them, advise, advise them of that and recommend measures to mitigate that, which, you know, would be the watertight basement, but because we don't expect any flow here, we don't see that as a problem at all. But we had, we definitely did consider that. Should we recognize you? Sure, attorney? go for it. I think so. So if 10 more people come forward with this and the engineering all looks good, are you going to grant all of them? Um, I respect, he's an expert and I respect that. Um, I'm an expert as an attorney. Accountants are experts. Engineers are experts. What we do is we make our best educated guess at something. But once in a while, we're wrong. So do you want to take the chance that if he's wrong and we get another expert in from a neighboring property where something is sinking or foundation is wrong, and that guy says, this guy's wrong, I'm right. City, you granted this. Why did you grant this? Uh, why did you vary from your ordinance? Think about it. There's a reason why we have that ordinance. Um, it was thought out by engineers. or so, It wasn't thought out by me, but there's a reason why we have that particular ordinance. Um, and so, again, if you're going to vary that, as kind of the mayor just alluded to, you got to have some good reasons. It can't just be because this is a good idea and we all want this. You got to have some good reasons as to why you're going to do it. Because believe me, the next guy is going to come by and want the same thing, or we're going to get in the middle of a big lawsuit. And I don't know if that's what you want. Um, you know, then they got an expert, they got an expert. This happens in personal injury cases all the time. One doctor says this, the other doctor says that, and then somehow a jury has to figure out who's right. Well, the point here is, do you even want to go there? You don't have to go there because the ordinance says you don't have to go there. So again, I just, I, I, I respect them and I respect what he wants and it's a, it's a neat thing. But be careful about what you grant in a case like this because it can always come back to haunt you. Believe me, people will listen to these meetings that we're having. People will listen to what went on. It must have been a big enough issue as to why this even came before a council. And so people will look at what we did and we'll have to you know, back that up in court or a deposition or whatever. We'll have to figure out and answer questions as to why we did what we did. So just be careful is all I'd say. Jeff, a question for you. Without having Bob here as the chair, is it possible to vote on this with just the two of us? You have a quorum. Okay. So yes, no you can problem. vote. You can defer I mean, it if you want. Right. You, can, you can vote on it. You can, you know, you're right now, again, you have a quorum. If you didn't have a quorum, that would be different. We wouldn't even be having a meeting if you didn't have and, a quorum. And the reason so, I brought it forward yeah. tonight was to give the homeowner some kind of finality one way or the other. I don't want to have him waiting till next month and sure. thinking... 
You know, mm -hmm. I think that was fair. Stop missing the next meeting. Just got his hand. I I was just going to say one thing too. I think most municipal, my experience, most municipalities have ordinances like this because most residential houses don't have specific engineering for them. They don't have geotechnical test borings and analyses performed. So I think once you have a site specific evaluation, you have a little different situation than what the intent of what I don't know specifically cities, but municipalities in general why they rate these ordinances because people aren't looking at it in a detailed specific way because I don't believe you have the same ordinance for commercial buildings they could go down 30 feet if they want because there's going to be a specific analysis for that and it's our analysis is that does it not the homeowners expert coming in so right. if you you do that we would have that reviewed by in our case grace but yeah um, you know so which probably outsources to you, but <laughs> anyway, <yeah. laughs> but hi, Bill Engel King, the uh, the owner, homeowner. A um, couple points uh, that came up, and first of all, thank you all for your consideration of this. Um, this is an attachment to an existing home, which was built in '99 or 2000. And ironically, at the time, the city required us to lower the elevation of the home. So it was in order to match the, um, you know, I guess the grade uh, relative to the other homes in the area. There was a home where we essentially tore down and built uh, on the, uh, which we're looking to build on the adjacent lot. And so we were forced to kind of lower our elevation down to match those two grades. So I can't recall what that difference was, but it was in the order of a foot or two wasn't happy about that at the time, uh, uh, and now I'm not really happy about it um, because now I'm building over, uh, and in, in order to, somebody said, build it higher, I'd have to create like a two or three step step in my in the middle of my house, which, you know, so that, I don't, it's, 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 a, it's an adjunct area, and I agree, you know, nobody has the right, I guess, to build a sport court, but part of the issue that we're dealing with kind of stems back to the fact that the grade on the original structure was forced down. Uh, I'm sorry, you asked a question. That's why I'm addressing your question. Um, uh, I asked a lot of questions. Yeah, <laughs> so, so that's why we're here. And then, and then obviously, finally, uh, we've engaged Giles. We're trying to do this thoughtfully and carefully, I got a lot of money that's going to go into this. I don't want to build a swimming pool. I want to build a sport court, right? So, and I certainly don't. My neighbor, I've been there 27 years. My neighbors have been there 22 years. We're all going to be there a long time. Certainly don't want to do, decrease the value of their house or create any problems there. So um, I wish they had noticed that because they would have been here in support of the project. But, um, and I would have loved to have them here. But, um, so those are the, those are the main points I really want to make is that, Part of this problem is a result of previous decisions made by the city in terms of original grade on the elevation of the original home. And, uh, you know, we've got the geotechnical engineering to back it up, to make sure that we've mitigated the risks. Can't eliminate them. We all know that. Uh, but we've tried to mitigate them as much as possible. I've tried to take on that risk as much as possible by offering to sign a whole harmless agreement and also some sort of agreement that we would disclose this condition to any subsequent buyer. Uh, so that somebody would come in eyes open to this issue uh, if they were to purchase the property uh, at some future date. So um, those are the comments that I would just make and the efforts that we've tried to make to do it right, do it carefully, and then not make it anybody else's issue. So thank you. Floor recognizes Jeff. I just want to, for the record, talk about that waiver home hold harmless agreement. Right. It's... It's fine with the current owner, but it's worthless in terms of a future owner because a future owner comes in and says, I have no desire to want to sign any kind of a hold harmless waiver. I want to just buy the property the way it is. And then if it floods, um, we have no agreement with him. So he, we, no hold harmless with him. So he can come after the city and basically say, why was this, why did you guys allow this in the first place? You should have never allowed it. So what does that do? That allows us to go after him mm -hmm. um, to basically indemnify us. We don't know where he'll be. We don't know if we can reach out and get him. And even if we can, again, my job is to try to keep you out of lawsuits. We, we, in the end, we may 
not have a problem. He may win the lawsuit, but it's going to cost time, money, attorney's fees. Do you really want to go down that path um, when the idea really is to keep you out of going to court? So be careful with the waiver. The waiver is good for us, but it's not going to be good for any future owner. Thank you, Jeff. I think for um, kind of sort of directed towards the owner, I think the, the threshold for comfort up here is, is really high. Um, and I, I kind of thought through this uh, after discussions. Uh, what would I want to see to the point where I would be comfortable? Um, I sort of throw it out there in, in conversation, like a, a third party, another um, engineer that would come in and say, hey, we've looked at the structural side of this. It's not going to affect and somebody that's willing to, again, I'm, I don't know how the, this whole process works, but um, and how do we go about hitting that threshold? I, for me, that there is a point where I would feel comfortable, but I I don't know if we're there yet. That's the problem. And I don't know at what point that dollar figure for you says, mm, let's do a redesign and just build it where it wanted to be built and the addition becomes cheaper than jumping through the hoops to, to make this work. Um, that's sort of a an open-ended comment. I don't have an answer for that, but... Um, Based on those comments, John, are you comfortable taking a vote on this right now, or are you going to defer? I would rather, um, I mean, not not comfortable voting to say it's okay. I, I mean, if we um, sort of ask for more information, ask for some sort of, again, I'm not, you know, I, I don't know how we go about doing that, um, if that's a question for Adam. Is there some sort of process, if, if you were in planning and you were looking to have... It's probably more for Scott. Okay. Um, a hey, I, I'm looking for a second opinion, right? Like, I've got, I'm sick. I need a second doctor. Um, if we're looking for that, to um, you know, is there somebody to go to that we could say, hey, this is somebody that could look at this structurally that um, could answer some of those questions? So I, I'm going to give you a couple things. Sure. The amount of drainage complaints that probably myself and Ryan, even the mayor has attended this the last better, couple days. Me. <laughs> it, it, when it rains hard, guys. Yeah, I know. I'm the one who emails you. I, 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 <laughs> I get complaints like it's, it's out, of, out of style. And wh why, we have, why we have these like rules here and these, and these things is, is the fact is just to eliminate the problem. Why, why deal with this? I mean, there is a large amount of homes that have two three sump pumps in their basement. And you know what? Right now, that groundwater is higher than normal. Uh, you go to Lake Michigan, you can tell, internal. When it rains, the next day I'll have, I'll have five phone calls right away. Ryan will have 10, Mayor will have three, and we have to all start doing these investigations and going through this stuff. There is reasons why not just us or other communities have these certain ordinances, okay? I'm still going to be all this engineering, I'm still going to recommend to you guys don't do this. I mean, this is, this is I mean, the reason why, it's, there's reasons why we, we, we do this. And the last thing I want to be is, okay, now, guess what? Something happens, you get a call, or whoever this district is, and I get a call, and it's like, well, we could have solved this thing. I get calls all the time of like, you have a drainage easement. Uh, you know what? I know there's a drainage in there. I want to put a shed in there. I want to put a landscaping in there. I want to put a fence in there. You know what? I just did it. The next neighbor calls me up. I got to go investigate and do this. Again, we're not denying this project. We're, if you wanted to raise it and put those stairs in there, we're not even here. Now, if you want to go down this path and look at another engineer to look at this back and forth, okay. So now you can find another geotechnical engineer to do it. And maybe Grafe because they're not maybe a geotechnical engineer, you have to do it. So let's just throw something out. PSI, you know, another one that would look at their report back and forth. Well, one, that shouldn't be the cost of the city. No. And that's my opinion. Uh, I'm just letting you know. Um, how many people are you going to have reports of doing this back and forth? What are we kind of all, how, how far are we going down this, this kind of rabbit hole here and what you guys want to do? But the last thing I want to do is, have anyone call me again on something that I knew if we just established it, that's what we do. Every time we do a new residence home, they come in and they take a groundwater shot. So I know a groundwater for that residential property. And we know that we're going to set that, that basement floor two feet above it. 
They're required on the plans now. There's a reason why. There's a reason why we did it. There's a reason why other communities do it. It's something where if you guys really want to seriously look at this, then you should, I mean, how much engineering you want to do? It's done for a reason. It, it, it just is. And I'm not trying to take this personal or whatever. I'm just telling you what you guys want to hear. So you can go Thank either way, but I would still recommend not doing this. Scott, Scott. Scott, can you just address that we had this issue with this same ordinance, this, this, same exact ordinance, and what the DSPS did with yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, this guy wanted to build his entire house in there. He, I mean, entire house. And you know what? He didn't like us. He said, guess what? I'm challenging your code. He went to the DSPS. It was time for Jeff, myself, Adam. We had right rebuttals. The, the lawyer have from DSPS, they, they challenged our code through this whole thing, and they found our code is correct. And that letter and is, is all in, in the public works memo. Everything did it. There is also, and I, I'm not trying to give you bad examples or always examples. I, I threw the country bliss example, town of sure. McGonagall. It's 2008. Read about it. Read about how they still have not solved their groundwater problem for a subdivision. This Again, I understand your report. I understand your time. Yep, money. I just look at it this, and, and I, my guess was he had to put three steps in, in the house to kind of even it out. It turns out to be two or three. And, and that's, it's hard for me to, to kind of say, let's waver on this thing, because we're going to get more and more and more people trying to do this. And right now, I, I just don't recommend this. So, so you have your engineer and your attorney not recommending this. Now, you don't have to follow us. You can do what you want, but right. kind of list, kind of, please listen to what we're all. No, saying. for sure. I mean, I, again, the calls that I had to the person that I spoke with, a uh, uh, couple things that were commented, and I wasn't going to say anything, but that we are the most restrictive in the state of Wisconsin. Now, I could be wrong, but um, you can probably speak to that as far as where we are. We're higher than everybody else, and there's a lot of cities that don't have it that high. Um, there's also a lot of building and construction that happens way below our level that is mitigated. Now, I, we get into the sump pump issue, right? So how would we deal with that? Well, in this case, if there is that real concern, then we do say, hey, it needs to be that full watertight construction with no sump. Um, again, the discussion that I had with the architect was that that is a really expensive way to go. It works, but it's like putting a, a bathtub in the bottom, and then you build in the bathtub, and then there's no water. Um, I, again, that's not my case to say that that's specifically... Um, financially feasible or something that he would want to undertake um, in the in the process of that conversation that's sort of where I came to um, that if you had a structure engineer that said yep um, this is going to be an issue with the construction side and you were willing to go watertight and we're not talking moving the water now you have no sump you have no um, a lot of the issues are addressed but again that's where I got into that it's a high bar for me to say that I'd be willing to say I'm okay with it um, and to answer the question, yes, I, if everybody wanted to hire their own personal structural and, and do their own soil stuff and somebody's willing to stand by and they wanted to build it down there, then so be it. I mean, that's, uh, that's where I stand on that. I'm, um, I don't have a problem, but I, I would imagine most people that are going to be building their homes aren't going to spend as much or want to go through that process or even take that risk. So um, that's sort of just my, my rant there, Tom. Can I recognize the mayor again? Can I make a suggestion? Sure. I know you guys, uh, it, it's tough to say no to people. And, you know, you for some reason, this committee has been granted some extraordinary powers that no other committee has right now. And <laughs> I guess enjoy it while you have it, because it's not probably going to last long. Um, but, um, you know, just pull, the, pull your fellow alderman right now. If this were on council, where would it go? I was going to ask that. And, and defer to that. Mm -hmm. Committee would like to just pull the, our... Other aldermen, see what their thoughts are. Eileen? I, <clears throat> I have had so many water issues in my district, and I went through a process with the city of having to do a drawdown, and I'm telling you, I'm sorry, but no. Mm -hmm. Kevin? I, I raise the issue, and I say no. John? I like as much as any that people would be able to do what they like to do, but... I have to hear what what was being said, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff's, Jeff's points are very, very solid and very, very right for our city. Sure. So I'd, ha I'd have to say no also. Rob? 
Well, just like Eileen, I have a lot of dilemmas in my area, and uh, even the newer homes, which there isn't much space to be built, um, actually I get the reverse calls because they're building up higher than the neighbors next to them, and they're worried about the water coming into their property. So there is impact on doing anything to your neighbors that way uh, as well, even though that is done correctly, and, and we use the engineer, probably your firm as well, when we do that. But... Uh, and you're pretty credible. I, I believe what you have to say and everything, but um, I, I think there's there's no hardship. Um, there's a lot of, you know, I, I always say that Muskego is built on a swamp. True or not, that's my saying. I, I stick by it. Uh, our attorney has spoke. Our uh, engineer has spoke. Um, we're only talking two feet different. Uh, can you build it higher? Maybe you should just stay started with that. A variance, you know, you mentioned you have money and time or whatever involved. A variance is you're going out on a limb and asking for something to begin with. Uh, you want something not not norm normal for everything else. Um, I don't know what happened with your building, why it had to be lower in the first place. That was one of the things I brought up. Uh, if you could go higher, and it seems like you can go higher, so I don't, I don't know what happened there, but uh, cut to the chase. Uh, you got to side with 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 what we're elected to do, and that's uh, honor our city uh, engineer and, and attorney. So I would have to, I would, I would, if I was on the committee, it would never have been up to the council. I, I would have voted no originally. I guess I want to thank everyone for providing all the information. I think it's all been very, very helpful. It really has. Uh, John, would you be ready to propose a vote on this? Um, sure. Out of respect for um, the individuals that are here, um, I'm willing to honor what um, the will of the group would have been, knowing that um, that's where that would have been. So um, I think that I'm comfortable to vote at this point. So okay. um, at this point, I would uh, make a motion that we... Um, so what are we, what's the question? We, there's two different. You right. make it okay. So you, you have a motion to reconsider. So okay. Now you're just taking the vote again. So, so to, we're, you'd make a motion to deny if you want to deny it. Or you're making okay. So we don't have to approve the reconsideration to then reconsider. Like there's not two different. You're, you're, you already have it <laughs> reconsidered. So okay. You're, just taking, you're making. You're, did they vote on that reconsideration already? That's what I was wondering. Like well, did they, we? Yeah, they, they they got it on the floor. So. We got it on the floor. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to like approve so you don't the. Have to bring the motion okay. to reconsider right. back on. You just have to bring it back through a motion in a second. Um, so I, at this point, I would make a motion that we uh, deny the request. Okay, I'd second that. Obviously, we're both in favor. Vote. All in favor. Mm -hmm. So all those in favor? <laughs> both of us are in favor. In favor of? We both are. Yes. All right. I think that closes that issue. We want to thank everyone for their time on that. Need a motion to adjourn. Then. We do need a motion to adjourn because there's no communication in miscellaneous business. So I need a motion from you to adjourn. I I make the motion to adjourn. I second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Seven forty.